Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here. One of the most frequent questions I get about power stations and using a non-proprietary external battery, that would be any LifePo4 or frankly any deep cycle battery, is how do I charge up that battery? And I thought, you know what? The best way to really truly explain that to you would be to demonstrate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my power stations, I'm gonna use the Opus Mega One, but you can do this with any power station, folks. Any power station that has a solar input, they're often referred to as MPPT solar inputs, which is maximum power point tracking, but that really doesn't matter. As long as it has a solar input, you can do what I'm going to do today. Now, if you've seen the video where I took a battery, just a regular LifePo4 battery, which by the way, costs less, considerably less, than the manufacturer's expandable batteries or expansion batteries or whatever the heck they call them. I take one of those and I plug it into the solar input on a power station and lo and behold, it charges up the power station. And the reason this works is a maximum power point tracking charge controller, which is what they are, those solar inputs. What they do is they analyze that incoming power from that solar panel, theoretically, and they say, okay, I've got X number of volts and it's within my range because they all are rated at a specific range. It might say a maximum of 24 volts and five amps or 80 volts and 15 amps or whatever. As long as you're within that voltage range, then it will take that power coming in and it will, it will adjust it as needed to charge the battery. What's gonna happen when you plug in this battery is that charge controller will see that 12.8 volts from a LifePo4 12 volt battery and it's gonna say, okay, well I can accept X number of amps, maybe it's 15 amps, and it will start to draw that. Depending on the software in the charge controller, it may not even draw all of those amps. It may only draw five amps off of a 12 volt battery or eight amps off a 12 volt battery, all based on the program. I don't wanna to get too deep in the weeds on how this works, but suffice to say, what happens is the charge controller in the power station sees the battery and it then assumes, you could think of it that way, though it doesn't, it's a computer, it doesn't care, that it's a solar panel. And it says, okay, I have essentially unlimited amperage and 12.8 volts. And so it starts to draw what it needs and what it's programmed to draw off that battery. Even though these batteries can allow 100 amps to be drawn off of them, the charge controllers are not programmed to do that. And the battery doesn't do anything. It's just inert, it sits there. Whatever draw happens, happens. It doesn't care. It doesn't know what's going on. So the charge controller itself says, okay, I got 12.8 volts, I'm gonna draw eight amps, and away you go. But the question that I'm always asked is, how do you charge that? Because I think people see this and they go, wow, that's cool, but how do I charge it? Well, obviously, if you've got utility power, you don't need your power station and you could charge your battery up off the wall socket. That's not what you're asking. You're asking, how do I charge that battery when I'm using it? Well, today, folks, I'm going to take a charge controller. It's actually Redodio's 12 volt DC to DC charger and MPPT charge controller. It allows both solar and either battery or alternator input. So you can hook it up to solar, just like a regular charge controller, hook it up to your battery and charge your battery up. But the question is, and I see this a lot, well, can I still connect the battery up to the power station? Well, the answer folks is yes, you can. So let's go outside. I'm gonna hook up a battery to this Opus Mega One power station. I'm gonna get it running. I'm gonna use a heater, a little Lasco ceramic heater that I have to draw power off of the power station so that I can show you the battery providing power to the power station and the power station running the heater. And then I'm gonna hook up that Redodio DC to DC charger with a solar panel connected to it to provide charge to the battery while the battery is providing power to the Opus Mega One. Now, you can do this with any power station that has a solar input. So let's go outside and I'm gonna hook everything up and show you how this works. Let's, let's head outside. Okay, folks, <laughs> we've got this little ceramic heater, which is currently drawing 222 watts to run off of my inverter. 
I'm sitting at 99%, but I'm drawing now 80 some odd watts, 86 right there from the Rododio 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. I've got a 30 amp fuse. I've run MC4 to MC4 ring terminals so I can go to the battery, to the MC4 cable provided by Opus, to the Opus, okay? So we're now pulling 100 watts, drawn to 20, it's gonna go down. But the question now becomes, can I hook that up to this and this to that so it can run that? The answer, folks, we're going to find out in just a second. Stand by. So we've got a 100-watt solar panel. It's not optimum the way it's sitting here. It is plugged in through the MC4 connectors into the Redodio DC to DC charger, which has an MPPT controller built in. You see that it says power on. We are charging. It's coming from solar charge and we're charging lithium batteries. So it is wired to this battery to charge this battery up, but wait, let's do this. Okay, <laughs> and let's see what happens, folks. Look at this, wattage is going up. Now we saw it at 100 before, so it should easily pull that 100. And again, I'm running a heater here, which I can crank up. I'm not gonna crank it up because I'm trying to uh, I, you know, I could, I could really ramp it up. If I go full blast, as you can see, it's going to start drawing a whole bunch more, but I don't want to do that. I'd like it to try and run around the 200, which it's doing, okay? So we'll even aim it at the Opus because it's cold out here. It'll help it warm it up. So here we are over 90. So we're at 95. <laughs> 99, look at that, 100. There we go. We're going up. So... <laughs> We've got a solar panel that's probably not producing more than 30 watts at best in the light. I mean, this is what we got to deal with here, folks. But if I had some good sun out and I had that panel aimed into the sun better, we'd get a little better wattage. But as you can see, we are charging. It is getting a solar charge. It's getting something. We're at 100. And I saw it hit 108. It's bouncing around a little bit here. All right, folks, there you go. That worked. Now, a couple of things. The Opus Mega One can take 800 watts of solar. And I think what you were seeing there is I was at the very, very bottom range of charging that up through solar. That solar port is rated from 12 volts to 80. So I'm sitting at 12.8, 13 volts. We were getting about eight amps. It's not very much, but that's because that could easily have a 48 volt battery put in or even two 36 volt batteries in series would work to give it that maximum. And then you could get closer to that 800 or maybe even right at that 800 watts of charging. So it's important to note that whatever you use, you gotta know what the inputs are. You may need to have a bigger battery than the 12 volt one I'm, I'm playing with today. Now, Red Audio does have 48 volt batteries. So if you wanna look at those, if you've got an Opus Mega One or a Pecron or something like that, that really needs that higher battery voltage to run through the MPPT controller to charge it up, I can drop a link down below for that. But bottom line, folks, it absolutely works. You can hook your solar panel through a charge controller up to the battery and the battery to your power station. So now you're charging that battery in the sun while it's providing charge to the power station and the power station is running things for you. Now, with a DC to DC charger like the Red Odeos, it both can take 600 watts of solar input or 45 amps coming off of your alternator on your car. You hook it up with a little wire, plug it in to your, to your battery right off the alternator you're gonna get 600 watts of charging off the alternator. So by using that Red Odeo, you've got two options. You've got both a charge controller that you can plug solar panels into and charge up that battery when your car's not running, or you can run your car if you had to in the middle of the night or whatever to charge up that battery while your power station is providing your needs. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This kind of stuff is really for emergency use. If you're looking to power a cabin or your home, I'm gonna suggest you go to do-it-yourself solar. Better suited for what you're trying to do. But if you're just looking to run a little cabin on weekends once in a while, this would absolutely work. 
And if you're in the middle of an outage and you're desperate and your power station's dying on you, if you've got LifePo 4 batteries, you can definitely hook them up to that power station and then run solar panels to your batteries to charge them up. They'll charge both especially because any excess power coming in off that solar panel that isn't needed to charge that battery is just gonna flow right on through to the power station. So there you have it, folks. I hope I answered that question. For those of you that had it, yes, you can absolutely do that. It works like a charm. Listen, folks, you all have a great day. I'm gonna drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. The old jar hit out.